Hey everyone and welcome, my name is Carlo Libertini and thanks for hanging with me today. In this video, we're going to take a look at recording in Magic Sequoia Pro 17. Why? Because maybe you didn't know this, Sequoia is famous for its mastering capabilities, its post-production services, uh, its advanced editing and recording is an important part of our industry. And there will be times where you want to record in Magic Sequoia. Now this really is an amazing application. It's a big one too, and it should be because it is world class. And new in version 17 Pro here, we've got a revised design, a more sleek modern look, if you will. We also have the ability to integrate external hardware effects. It has ARA plugin support and MIDI plugin support, and the list goes on and on and on. But one thing I really love about Sequoia Pro 17, of course, is the quality of the audio. It uses something called a hybrid audio engine, if you will. So you can monitor live with extremely low latencies and it's super advanced. Plus it also includes Steinberg Spectral Layers Pro, uh, version 10, I believe, SoundForge Pro 17, Melodyne, uh, RX, 10 elements, and the list goes on and on and on. Of course, for more information, just visit the links below or just go to magics.com. So let's take a look at our session here. Now I've got some drum tracks, and I wanna record bass to this right in Sequoia Pro 17. So let's talk about getting started in some of the tips and techniques that I personally use that might be able to help you out in your sessions. All right, let's take a quick listen to what we have here and we can test our audio at home. I've got overheads, snare, and a kick drum track. All right, great. So the first thing you want to do is set up Sequoia Pro 17 here for recording. Now I drag and drop these drum tracks into here, and what we're going to do is create another track. I can come up to track, right here and choose insert new tracks. And look at all the options that we're going to get here because MIDI, tempo tracks, video tracks, folder tracks, new submix buses, aux buses, surround and surround mastering, really flexible. I'm gonna add one track and let me see, I wanna put it after track four here. So let's do that and there we go, now we have track five. Now, so creating tracks is really easy as you can see and let's name our track here i know this is a snare drum track i'm going to double click in there and just write in uh snare just like that but there's another way if you want you can right click on a track and it brings up the track options and this is important this is where you want to start because these fundamentals are really imp important from your recording right here you want to choose your device I would be recording through my Mo2 A288 Pre. I'm using this um, application for the screen recording. You could choose the color right here. For example, we can activate that and say, yeah, uh, I actually traditionally like to make my bass tracks purple and hit OK. And so this track is going to be purple. You can also have effects and routing here. And it gives you a plug-in latency uh, visual, which I think is really important too. And all of this happens right here in the track options. So you definitely want to visit this. And then another important feature here is because I want to record a mono bass guitar, I'm going to select mono in my audio options. Okay, and when all that is done, you can still go here and rename your track. And we'll call this one bass and just choose OK. Now you can see the track color here is purple and it's labeled bass. And if you properly selected your audio int recording interface from the dropdown, you'd be ready to go. All right, now let's talk about uh, levels now. If I wanted to change all the playback levels of my drums, I can actually just group them. I can select my overhead and come down and select these tracks and I can actually type in a value. Let's say just for example, I wanted to do like minus six and all of them, by the way, lowered in volume, but also visually, did you see that as well? Let me undo that. Watch how the waveforms lower as well. I can take this and shrink them all down. So it gives me a nice visual to represent the value that we're including here when we're adjusting the playback, all right? 
So you can adjust the playback volume. So to help you with your performance, in this case, we're recording a bass guitar to really get the feel down. All right, so we talked about creating tracks, the kind of tracks we can create. I chose mono here, and I even colored this one purple. Now you could go in here, like for example, if you wanted to make your, let's say traditionally, like I do this sometimes, I'll take my overhead tracks and let's see, I'll select them both and then right click and choose a color representing them, something like maybe orange, let's say, and hit okay, and there you go. And now you got orange tracks. We could also choose, let's see if that was a little too bright for us. <laughs> let's choose something a little bit warmer like this and there. So I love color coding tracks because it helps me visually identify the audio quickly, quicker and easier. All right. Now, next, I want to talk about our click track, if you will. And this is really important because there's two really powerful methods of doing this. Look down here in our transport bar. If you do not see your transport bar, by the way, come up to view. And this is where you can activate all of your windows. I want to, let's see, see my transport control, control shift T, and there it is open right here at the bottom. Now you can actually dock these anywhere you'd like. For example, I have my track editor window open right here. I like this because as I select a track, you can see it gives me more of the power and detail representing what I'd like to do with that track. For example, on my snare track or my kick track, you can see I've inserted a gate right there. And I think that's really cool. You can also remove the plugin, add more plugins uh, right from within the track editor. So I like having the side window open because when I select a track, I could see more details if I have additional processing or an added EQ here, which I like. Now, let's talk about the click track a little bit more. You can see down here, you could choose from some standard BPMs. You could even choose a new tempo track, or you could tap the tempo in there. Or you could just double click like I did and add 80 BPM. And if you want the trick, the click to play back, highlight it like so, and it will play back for you, ready for you to record. Pretty standard, right? But things get really better. Check this out. I'm going to select my overhead left and I'm going to come up. I'm going to create a click track, an actual one. And the reason why I love this technique, I used to do this years ago more manually. And I'm glad that more professional digital audio workstation, I'm not surprised that Sequoia Pro 17 includes this. It's really, really, really handy. Um, come up to, uh, let's see, I'm going to go to edit tempo and create a click track right there. And this is going to give us some information. I want to go from start. Usually I'll do this, but you can actually cre create an actual waveform click track in sections of your audio. Or what I like to do, create one for the entire length, and then I automate sections and see the potential within that. Hit OK. And watch this. Now I have an actual real click track. These are, this is a waveform representing our click track. Now you might be asking yourself, why would I want to do that? Well, when I'm recording, this gives me so much more power. For example, now that it's an actual track, a physical track, you can see that I have properties here that I can help use to customize that. For example, I could bust this track to additional tracks. Uh, you could even automate this. That's right. And you can, my favorite, you can EQ this. Check this out. Sometimes if the click track is a little bit too annoying in your ear and you're going to be listening to it all day, well, here in the track editor, we have an actual EQ right here. I'll expand it and show it right there. And you could activate it and deactivate it. Let's turn it on right now and let's roll off some of the highs. And let's play it back. Check that out. I'm rolling off the lows. And you can EQ it.
Now, why would I want to do that? Because again, if I'm listening to a click track all day, I really don't want it to always be so hammering in my eardrums. So this is one way to do it. If you didn't want to use the onboard EQ, another method would be to insert an effects here. Open our plugin browser, and we could go to Magix right here, and we could choose, or one of my favorite methods, just come up here and type in EQ, and look at that. Magix Dynamic EQ, let's add that onto our track. So what we can do now is I can actually take this node and make a low cut and this will make a high cut. And I can now tone shape my EQ, the EQ for the click track. If that's too much, there. All right, so you can see the advantages of having an actual practical click track as opposed to just the rudimentary sound, which you can activate here in your taskbar. You have both choices are fine. But as I mentioned before, one of the advantage of creating this uh, click track is that we can now actually expose, let's say our volume or take lanes. We can actually go in there and now create automation. Now, when you create automation, you can actually draw in the automation lines. For example, with the, I'm going to choose, um, uh, I think it's alt, alt K. There we go for the volume. And let's expand this one a little bit and let's zoom in. So let's say I wanted my click track now to dip. Once the song kicks in, I can add a node there and add a node here. And I can now lower the click track. So it kind of fades a little bit. Because when you're working with artists, you want to make this really comfortable, the whole recording process. And this is one way to do it. We lowered it by 10 dBs. All right, let's hear that with the drums. Ready? Okay. Here we go. So the click is now still in there, but it's very, very quiet. This is one of my favorite advantages. And let's go to this section of the song right here. Let's say you want to increase it now because there's a long break here. We could do just the same right here. Bring it back up to level like that. So. This is a huge advantage and I love it. And I do use this quite frequently in my recording projects. Again, it's all about keeping your artists comfortable and happy and that's repeat business. Okay, so we talked about automation, writing automation. Uh, we showed you how to do some track properties. We included here some EQs. We even did the onboard EQ here. And uh, now we're uh, ready to record some bass. Now, if you remember on our bass track right here, if I right click it, I chose mono. That means that it will record just that one track of that bass. Keep that in mind, by the way, because you know, even if you record it in stereo, you could always uh, create a mono track from that. But you know, now you know, and that's really what's important. Uh, so let's go into our take lanes here. And what this is going to mean is as you're recording audio and your tracks, for example, your bass guitar, as you stop, a take lane will automatically populate that waveform in this lane right here for you. This means that you can actually easily punch in or track over particular areas of your your recording, because if you wanted to just redo the intro, the outro, or anything in between there, take lanes, every time you record, record a brand new take lane for every time you record, and it's easy to help you compile those tracks together. So that advantage is right here, this little button right there for a take lane. And this one here is the automation, okay? Automation and take lanes are right there. Okay, so now that we're all set with that, all you need to do is arm your track right here. And if you don't hear your instrument being played back, just right here, you need to activate monitoring.
And this will allow you to hear your, your instruments in conjunction with the other tracks that are being played back in the session that you are recording to. Now, I would usually would start from the very beginning. Our click track will come in here that we created. It'll lower down for us and uh, we're ready to go. So I'm going to record a quick bass guitar track right now onto this and I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. And as you can see, we now have a bass guitar waveform here. Let me right click again and let's change our colors. And there we go. I love that purple and orange scheme. Let's take a listen to where we are. Now you'll notice, I did that on purpose, where you're wondering where the sound is, it's because right here, we have to deactivate monitoring and I often have to deactivate the recording button. Did you catch that? All right, now you won't make that mistake yourself. There you have it. So recording into Sequoia Pro 17 is really easy, but some of these tips and techniques I wanted to show you regarding the click track and accessing the track options, really, really crucial. Because remember, you're also telling the audio where the recorded file is going to go in this section, and that's really crucial. I think you should always know where your audio is going for file management and Sequoia makes it really easy this way. And we talked a little bit about effects and obviously the main track editor. One thing I'd love to show you again here under view is the mixer. Now this window is floating and yes, you can actually activate your recording and monitoring of course through this. Now, the reason why it's floating is I could run it off to a second monitor, which is what I usually do, or you could fill this entire window with it by dragging it in this location or all the way to the right side or the left side or even down below. So these little anchor points will help you with that. Here, let me put it right there and there we go. Okay, so hopefully this will help you with your future recordings. Now remember Magic Sequoia Pro 17 is a flagship product. It is huge, it is professional, and it is incredibly capable at so many things. So don't forget to visit magics.com for more information. Visit the links below, and thank you for hanging with me today. Stay busy and stay creative, everyone, and thanks for watching.